always learning and growing, attracting the right people, and keeping your vision in focus, in focus every day. This is the Brian Covey Show. Hey guys, coming to you live from the Lone Depot studio here in Brentwood, Tennessee. So we've got Emily Campbell with us. So those of you who don't hey know, <laughs> rock star recruiter, Lone Depot, obviously we're cranking there. But Emily came in the last couple days and it's been really awesome having you here. So tell Thank us a little you. about what we've been doing the last couple of days. What brought you into town with us? So I could not not come down yes. and hop in the car, uh, drive for actually even despite the tornado that came through town. Which was crazy. <laughs> but um, for months, actually, it may even be close to nine months, we have been speaking with a candidate, building relationship, and flew him out uh, to see everything live in person. Yeah. And again, I, I could not uh, not take advantage of the opportunity to come down and just continue to nurture that relationship. So yeah, you're like our secret weapon. So most <laughs> recruiters, I know, that they don't get to meet candidates, and we talk about that all the time, but you came in, and I think that made a very unique experience. We were trying to create an experience when someone comes in town where it's not just, hey, here's what we do great, but let's hear your story, right? Listen to that candidate who's looking to join. Like, what, what are you dreaming about? What do you want to do with your career? I think you being here, at least as I was observing, just brought out great conversation. We got to know them. They got to know us. Almost like a day in the life of what would it be like working with you guys? Well, and I've been speaking with this candidate for months now. I already feel like we're friends. Right. You know? Yeah. And um, it just, yeah, it was like meeting an old friend in person. Yeah. Not just on Facebook, but like yeah. we're actually friends. Like, you know? <laughs> right, not just Facebook friends. <laughs> we, we go past Facebook <laughs> on those. So I'm really curious. So you were telling me your story about how you got into recruiting, and mm -hmm. this has really been a passion of yours. So I'd love to just kind of unpack that and everybody know your story of how you got in to where you are and just kind of take us through a little bit of that journey. Yeah, so it's a little bit full circle. I actually did go to college to become a recruiter. Um, my unique, very <laughs> unique. unique. Yeah. Uh, my degree is in HR and my first position out of college was with a bank. Yeah. And I was with the company about two weeks um, going around through the different departments and spent time in mortgage lending. And at the end of the week, I was called into the VP's office, door closed. I'm paranoid. I'm thinking I have What's completely happening? blown it. I'm getting <laughs> fired. And instead I was offered a job as a mortgage loan officer Two with weeks. the bank. You Two weeks. You impressed them that much. Yeah. <laughs> so they recruited me away from recruiting <laughs> and I, you know, kind of fell into it. Absolutely loved it. That's awesome. Just, just loved it. It was so, so rewarding. And um, so now again, kind of full circle, yeah. being able to marry the two, recruiting and my first job, you know, which kind of warms my heart. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love it every day. So what did you like in the beginning, right? Because not knowing how that role would really play out, you get the new role two weeks in, Mm -hmm. and, and now you're recruiting people. What was the thing early on that you said, okay, this is what excites me, or like, I feel like I may have a passion around and be good at this? You know, I think for me, it's always been about helping people. Yeah. And um, seeing the actual impact, I mean, again, putting someone into a home, I mean, how exciting is that? Yeah. You know, or helping Very them to, rewarding. you know, in this refinance market to, you know, um, save some money. Right. But I guess for me, that's what gets me energized every day is helping yeah. people. And when I'm making cold calls, which I love, by the <laughs> way, I know that makes me completely. A lot of people are just afraid <laughs> completely. They won't do it. <laughs> I love it, but it's an opportunity to potentially help someone. That's right. And that's how I enter every conversation. What a cool mindset, too, because if you enter it that way, I always find you're giving, right, of your time, which we, we talked about as oh, valuable commodity. Valuable commodity. Right? Especially right now where everyone is so busy. But to give someone time and then to listen to them, mm -hmm. you know, those are the areas many recruiters, we probably know if we went down the list of like, what not to do as a recruiter, mm -hmm. they typically don't listen. Mm -hmm. They're not coming in to give something of value. They're in there to sell and just, hey, here's everything we're great at at our company. I don't, right? think, I don't think of it that way. I think of myself more as a career consultant. Oh, I love that. Career <laughs> consultant. Mm -hmm. We're going to put that in the title now. Right? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, really getting, um, you know, having those mindful conversations and listening to core values, you know, that, yeah. that candidates are sharing with me and finding alignment, yeah. you know, within the organization. Um, and it may look like the exact same role they have now with better efficiencies, or it may be a move up or a sideways move. Yeah, um, but and you're uncovering that probably in that conversation of, okay, here's what you like to do. Here, here's mm -hmm. where you've been. Here's where you are. And so I think that's usually 
the conversation just ebbs and flows naturally. And multiple conversations. It's yeah. not one conversation. Yeah, hopefully it's they don't want to join and we don't want to hire them really after scary, one. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we don't know each other yet. Yeah. Yeah, it gets there. So I'm curious, when you started, you told us all the things you loved. What was maybe one thing that you didn't expect or was not anticipated in the role that you, you got into it and you're like, oh, I didn't really know it was gonna play out like this or just a little bit different. So I will say what's really interesting are the parallels. When I came into the industry, we were also in a refi craze. Oh, like and this, yep. Uh, yep, so I understand how challenging it is right now. Yeah. Um, I would walk into my voicemail full every day, <laughs> you know, hundreds of emails and yeah. just this, the stress it's a stressful yeah. industry. Especially right now where, like Anthony saw today, the capacity and the number of people calling in, and mm -hmm. how do you manage through that? And it really can be stressful. And it's nonstop. Yeah, right? It's seven days a week. All hours. It's seven days a week. So, yeah, yeah so I think that was, you know, understanding that and, and keeping that in mind when I'm on the phone with candidates that, you know, they have, you know, their own personal lives and things going on, but it's a very right. stressful job. Yeah. And they're not expecting my phone call right now. Right. So. And you're catching them at a good moment, bad moment. You don't know until they yeah, answer no. the phone. And one thing I've picked up, and I always have appreciated this about you, is your energy through the phone, knowing you're not meeting them, is your energy is always high and you're always positive. And it's a, I've even had people tell me, they're like, man, Emily called, and if she wasn't so um, excited on the other line, I probably wouldn't have talked to her. But that excitement transfers. Mm -hmm. And so, like, how do you create that? Because I, I do think there is an energy in a transference on the phone that if you do it well, you can actually build a relationship from there, and it's different than the previous people that have called. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's definitely some simple, like, tips and tricks <laughs> that go through my head. Yeah. Um, and again, this may sound simple, but one of the things that I do, I love pulling up someone's LinkedIn or their Facebook, and when I make the dial, looking at their picture, it just it's makes it person. so much more personal. I feel like I'm literally meeting them eye to eye, so yeah. when I'm talking over the phone and I'm smiling, I'm looking at, you know, the LinkedIn, Facebook eyes. Um, so, hey, when you receive a phone call from me, yes, I'm out on your social media profile. Simple, but that's, most it's people personal. Don't do that. I think yeah. it makes it more personal. Yeah. So. You actually see who they are and, and I'll do something similar and you, you know, if they're on Facebook or, or Instagram, those, and you actually see, do they have a family? What are their sports teams? And I know you do that research. Mm -hmm. I think today, that's one area I'm curious for you, like, how much do you prepare going into those calls and what does that look like? Because I feel like you come in and like our conversations, you're very prepared. You usually tell me things about candidates. So like, mm -hmm. oh, this is great. This is gonna be wonderful when I connect with them. Mm -hmm. So how do you, your normal typical preparation look like? Yeah, I mean, when I'm, on, when I'm having a conversation with someone, I'm always thinking about the personal, professional, and financial, and they're all a little bit like intertwined. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to affirm, again, <laughs> we are in such a crazy industry. It's super stressful. It can be negative. It can be frustrating. And just a kind word, a kind statement, hey, you know, out on social media, you know, your dog is adorable. <laughs> all of a sudden, yes. the guards come yes. down. Your what? <laughs> dog? Let's talk about my dog. Yeah, I really would like to talk. <laughs> yeah. You know, you posted it, so you're probably passionate about your dog. Right. So that may be an easier conversation to have yeah. um, than the actual conversation. Yeah, I find... So kind of warming up the cold call. I love that because the people that have done their research, at least I have a respect level for, they come in and they say, you know what, Brian, I noticed this, whether it's soccer or, you know, CrossFit stuff or whatever it is. Like, they connect and it's not just the typical call like, hey, your production's great. Hey, I see you're at this company and mm -hmm. coming at you from a very salesy. So when you kind of break the ice with people, is there typically a process that you follow like through those phone conversations or you just let it, let it go where, where it may go? I do let it meander a little bit. Um, I really try to be mindful, like being present in my conversation. Yeah. I mean, I have someone who is actually taking the time, who doesn't know me, right. doesn't know what company I'm with, doesn't know my name, to stop. I'm interrupting what they're doing. And yeah. so I'm, I'm thankful yeah. for that. And I just try to lean into it and listen and, and ask questions and, and get them to open up. But I guess in general, when I'm learning about candidates, um, Ford, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams, yes. right? So I try to learn a little bit in each yeah. of those areas, you know, in speaking with people. And for me, I have found it makes me a little bit more memorable right? because this is a relationship that we're building. It isn't one phone call and I'm not gonna ever call you again, right. you know? So um, I have found that people remember me 
for the questions that I ask yeah. later on down the road and the things that I share. So I'll share personally if we connect about travel. I actually had this the other day and um, gal that I was speaking with remembered that I take an annual girls trip with my high school girlfriends and she asked me about it. I was <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> good. Connecting, yeah. good memory. Yeah. Yeah, those are the connections. So I'm curious if you've been doing this for a while now. So how many years? Oh gosh, well I have been in sales and marketing my entire career, so oh, 25 so years wow. so aging myself. What, what's maybe one of the biggest changes you've seen from oh. when you start and you walked in the bank, right? And you get promoted two weeks later, move in a new role, to where things are today and what Emily does today. Mm -hmm. What's maybe one of those big changes you've seen? Yeah, social media, 100% oh. social media. Yeah. Um, I, I had a cell phone when I first started. Yes. Um, with in this, large. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We were talking about that earlier with the Blackberries and, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the pagers. <laughs> <Scroll. laughs> yeah. So things have changed a lot. And again, there's just, um, there's so much information out there uh, about people and it's so highly available that if you don't take advantage of it, then you're just gonna come you're across You're missing out. Yeah, you're completely. percent um, and, and also, I guess on our end, you know, we talk about branding yeah. a lot. So instead of sort of pushing the sale, attracting yes. um, like-minded, you know, core values, yeah. you know, like a magnet, we talk about that. When you started doing videos, which is interesting to me because I watch and you look out in LinkedIn or other places and you go, how many recruiters are actually doing their own personal videos versus how many are just dialing mm -hmm. and they're still trying to, in a way, connect, which you, you can, but I think you've really broken through. We've seen Shane do this as well, and many on our team. Of how are you using video today? So you mentioned social media, but I see you using video. Mm -hmm. So kind of like True. tell us, like, how'd you get that decision to do it? What are you doing with Forced video now? Forced to do <laughs> it, and it wasn't you, by the yeah. way. It was a previous previous employer, and um, I have to laugh about it a little bit because I probably fought it for a good year Most before I got did. before I got into it. And I think a lot of it just goes back to fear. Um, yeah. I was, an I'm an only child, um, only grandchild, very small family. I was painfully shy as a yeah. child, which, and here I am in sales. Yeah. Um, terrified of speaking in public, absolutely terrified. And I think you just have to be vulnerable. Yeah. And I think people um, resonate with that. That's right. Just being yourself and just talking, it's just a conversation. Well, how many people reached out to me and they're like, Hey, you and Emily, are your, your partners, right? Like she's with your group. Like, yes, she is. Like she's on video now. Now you can hear her message. And I do think it allows you to take that next level of, it's not just a phone conversation. We're actually now, I can see you. I can see how you speak and the energy that's there. And so after you started doing videos, you've done a few since then that I've seen that are fantastic. How are you now leveraging video in that recruiting world? Or like, how do you connect with people on video that maybe we don't see on social, but I think yeah. you probably do some other things with video. Yeah, uh, texting video, I mean, goodness, you have a great conversation. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of sending, um, you know, a thank you card or a text message, just a quick video, you know, of yourself. I yeah. think that's a great way to do it. But, but I think that the posting of the video, again, being vulnerable, you know, kind of in the early stages in our industry, <laughs> at least with recruiting and posting out a video, people are curious. Yes. Because I think there's pressure in our industry that I need to do video, I need to be yep. out on social media, I'm kind of terrified about it, <laughs> right. and I see you're doing it, so I'm gonna kind of watch and follow along and see how this evolves. Yes. And so it, it, I have a lot of conversations with folks, and it's like, well, you know, let's kind of do this together. Yeah. Do a video, it. and tell me when you post your video, and I will comment on it. Boom. And I think that that's where I really see people starting to watch and they're like, okay, I could emulate and do some things like that. Like, what are they talking about? What's their background? You know, you see people overanalyze it all. Right. So like, that was cool because you just jumped into it and did it. I did. And I think that's where a lot of us are like, we look back now and people ask like, how did you start video? And you're like, same way, painful, <laughs> scared to death. <laughs> iPhone. And don't rewatch it. Post it and move on. Let it go. Don't just let it go. <laughs> Be Elsa, right? Elsa? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Absolutely. So let's shift over a little bit personalized, like what do you do for fun? And like, who, who's Emily outside of recruiting and, and working at Lone Depot? <laughs> well, so I am recently remarried. Yes. So as of December 30th, so that's Beautiful pretty Beautiful wedding, fresh. I saw those pictures. <laughs> On the beach, so definitely that is, I love to travel. I love to travel. I live to travel. That's I'm a always, big thing. I love that. I'm always planning my next. Even actually, when I'm on vacation, I'm usually planning. You're my doing next the next. Yeah, like, okay, here's where we're going next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and physical fitness 
Yeah. You know, we, we talk about that. Um, hugely important. I think there's such a correlation um, between folks that are strong physically. Yes. So kind of the strong physically, emotionally, spiritually. Yeah. It just all translates, um, you know, on the job. They're all, they Reduces all intersect. Stress. Right. Yeah. Especially in this business you mentioned, and we all know this, like to be able to do what we do at the pace we do it at consistently year over year, we joke, you start every month back at zero. Mm -hmm. Right, and you're starting again, and you're working with your customers, and especially for you, you're, you're trying to bring people into a team, and some have started, some are still in the process, some you've never talked to yet, and um, I'm it curious. It helps me to relieve stress, too. I think that's important. You know, I find, for me, the way that I best manage stress is trying to release the valve throughout yeah. the day, you know, yeah. taking transitions, being, you know, kind of taking some, some breaths, and then at the end of the day, turning yeah. it off, and sweating it out. <laughs> that's it. And I think that's where a lot of us, it's like, you got to do that, mm -hmm. right? Because the business will, you can either let it run you or you can, you can run it. So being a travel person as well, what's the best place you've traveled to, like your favorite? I would say the reason why I love travel is also kind of my favorite, yeah. you know, experience. Um, I, and when I was in college, I studied abroad for a summer. I was there for two months and then I stayed an extra month with a backpack. And Where is this? Uh, so, okay, all over. I started in London, oh, wow. worked my way up Scotland, Ireland, London, let's see, and then we basically went up to Amsterdam, all the way down to Naples, Italy, and everything in between. I had a Eurorail pass oh. and a backpack. I love that. And I would actually redo that now. You would? At age 45, yes, absolutely. Grunge it. <laughs> how many people can say they've done that? I mean, that's one of those, yeah, you look back. It's and a like, life, yeah, it's life changing. Pretty amazing places in the world to go to, but then to backpack through. Mm -hmm. Different way to see mm -hmm. everything there. Well, it was my first experience really seeing different cultures. Yeah. I grew up in central Illinois, pretty vanilla. Um, and just the sights and the smells and the food and so many different types of people and culture. Yeah. Um, that's always been a draw for me, that's just that cool. diversity. So. so we know you'd want to do that one again. What would be another, besides the backpack and going back over Europe and all, where else have you kind of got on your bucket list where you're like, okay, this is, this, I got to go here? Well, we have one. Thanks uh -huh. to my husband, we were at an event and he won an auction. We are going on safari, oh. Africa. South Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So you've done your homework and research all the big we animals over there. Yeah, <laughs> we are starting to. Yeah. So that's 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 for next year. Um, Hawaii is oh, is that'd on be the nice. plate for later this year. Yeah. So got a couple of things planned. So you can mix those together. Mm hmm I love that because I think really in our business a lot of times you will find we're talking to people not having dreams and goals of things to do outside of like when you work hard, like okay, now what is really my passion outside of what I do every day? and being congruent with that so that you look forward to And your to passion something. can't be work. Like, yeah. that can't be your answer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've seen too many, I mean, how many people do we know They're that they burn out and then you look mm -hmm. up and you're like, was it really worth it, right? And, and that legacy, we talk about that a lot. Like, what's your legacy gonna be with your kids and your friends and your family and everyone? And it's probably not the numbers and the amount of people yeah. you've hired and the lives you change, mm -hmm. right, through that process, mm -hmm. the things you do along the way. Mm -hmm. And it's almost, I found, it's almost a good perspective when you come back from a trip. Absolutely. You've had time to slow down and get clarity. So, you know, I'm sure for you, like when you travel, there's probably little mini trips you do too, besides the big safari. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah, little mini road trips. So locally, like staying in the States, is there anywhere is like your go-to where you're like, if I'm getting away, like girls trip sounds like you guys do every year. You, yeah. You pick some cool destinations or? Yeah, we have. So we've been doing it now for four years. Um, New York City, that was a blast. Oh, yeah. That was a blast. My wife and her sister and mom went, a bunch of friends, and it's like, apparently that is the thing to do. It's fun. I love theater. So even like shorter, I guess, trips yeah, they went to like shows locally. There. Yeah. yeah. So I, I love theater. I do a lot of that locally. That's Sporting cool. events in Indy where I live, Indianapolis, Colts, Pacers, little getaways, even if it's just on a Wednesday night. Just so. go. Yeah, those <laughs> are the go. ones to get away. Yeah. So I'm gonna shift back to the recruiting because I think people that uh, either it's their full time job to recruit, mm -hmm. or they're people like me where yes, it's a large part of what we do, even to somebody that's new and now today they want to grow a team mortgage non-mortgage i think you know it probably mm -hmm. overlaps what would be one of the tips you would give them today on how they could improve and, and become a better recruiter attractor of talent we kind of talk about yeah so i would say it's very similar to video um most people are scared to make cold calls 
and you, you, have, you, you have to make them. You just have to make them. <laughs> just <laughs> I have don't to know. do it. You do, and you have to get in a rhythm. Um, I, I think, you know, also recognizing that, you know, that first call, you're not going to close the deal. You're not going to get the meeting. It's in the, the baby yeses, the baby yes, yes permission steps along the way. Um, and, and recognizing that you do have value to add um, figuring out where that value intersects yeah. with the person that you're on the phone with. And so that's kind of the reason for the follow-up call. Yes. Hey, I saw this article. I immediately thought of you. Uh, do you mind if I, you know, send over a text and a link? I'd, I'd love to know what you think about it. Love that. You know, very people, personal. people will take those phone calls. Yeah. I like that piece. So we did the do's. What would be like one of the one or two things? Don't don't do this. You've seen a recruiter either try it with you because you get recruited, like I get. I do get right? recruited. So you see it from the other side. So what are some things you'd say? Hey, let's not do this. This guys, this doesn't work. Yeah, going straight for the money. That's the worst. You know, I can offer you, you know, two hundred basis points, or I can double your income, and I'm you know, promote you. You're gonna have this whatever upward mobility. I think one of yeah. one of our managers was sharing like upward mobility. What's that? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's terrible. And, and focus, <laughs> focusing on headcount, I mean, again, I think you really have to get to know people. Yes. And for me, I've shared this with you, um, I'm, when I'm on the phone with someone, I'm always thinking, you know, dream a dream. Okay, if you could dream yeah. a dream of, you know, where you'd like to take your career, what would that look like? Even if you're nowhere near that today, don't worry about that, but just, just talk it through. So again, kind of just back to that career consulting piece. I was saying that comes full circle to really how you start your conversations of mm -hmm. trying to even uncover what, what are their desires, what are the things that they're wanting to accomplish, and just getting to know them. Well, and, and again, we've talked about this as well, you know, this is such a busy, busy season. People are frustrated. Um, they could be, you know, unhappy in their current role, but they may not even know why. Right. So kind of like going to the doctor and it's like, oh, I just feel really tired, but I don't know why. So again, asking kind of just those thoughtful questions, yes. allowing people to open up a little bit of a therapy session, yeah. you know, so let them vent. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and don't always offer the solutions. Again, yeah. just, just listen. That's it. So we were able to go to the Housing Wire event together, mm -hmm. the inaugural first day annual Housing Wire talent event. So you got to go, which I thought was very impactful because we're there, we're connecting, we're networking with people, but you got to see the whole day. So and I know we sent, we shared notes back and forth. Mm -hmm. As you look back on that, were there any takeaways from that type of event or anything that you left and you're like, okay, this gave me a little bit more clarity around like maybe how we recruit or attract talent? Yeah, so there was a panel that had top originators and yeah. they were sharing how about how they like to be recruited. And I assumed that they were going to all roll their eyes and say, I can't stand it when I get a recruiter <laughs> call. And that's not it. Yeah. It's a certain type of recruiter call or that's a right. certain type of outreach. But again, when it's a, a phone conversation with a value add based upon a slowly built relationship, um, building trust yes. along the way that um, it's it's open, yeah. you know, they're open to it. And all of them said, this is how I'd like to be pursued in a way. And it, it was all back to what you said was get to know me, like know mm -hmm. who I am as a person. My numbers are not what you're calling me about. Right. The number, we, we already no. know those. Right. And now it's really, let's get to know each other. And that was very fascinating to me because I thought listening to each of the three share how they'd like to be pursued Mm -hmm. Those were there. It was it was very intriguing because you had, mm -hmm. you know, a really good panel yeah. of people. Yeah. So that was a cool one. And then I know um, we got back and we took a bunch of notes mm -hmm. and we had some kind of takeaways and stuff we were doing there. I always find those events give you a little bit of clarity and almost inspiration. I was just thinking inspiration right? in my head. Yeah. Abs absolutely. Um, I love to learn. Yeah, so I would, say, yeah, on my, on my way down, I, one of the reasons why I love to travel is it's when I listen to my audiobooks. <laughs> yes, audiobooks, podcasts, on the yeah, down. Yeah, and, and just being able to, to share that out, you know, again, because we're all sort of in the, you know, yeah. the same realm, so. I love that. So any inspirations in your life that have kind of gotten you to where you are? People that you kind of admire, that you, you look up to, that you follow? Yeah, yeah. So, um, actually, the book that I am listening to, um, 
right now on my way down, there was a description of what a brave leader looks like. I'm always thinking about the different types of leaders that I've worked with. Yes. And I love this description of who a brave leader is. It's something I've been meditating on because you're one of my leaders. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is um, a brave leader having a strong spine, a soft front, and a wild heart. Hmm. Say that again. I, I like that. I know. I know. That's There's really a good. lot there. So a strong spine. Yes. You know, strong back. Yep. A soft front and a wild heart. Hmm. So the way I've been dissecting this, um, so again, we talked about physical fitness. Yeah. I've been into yoga lately, so I'm like <laughs> spine. Okay, that's like yoga, like tree pose. I won't do that right now yes. for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But, you know, having that foundation and then sort of the, the soft front being open, you know, to new ideas, yes. being highly available, being affirming, um, you know, allowing some e emotion and feelings, you know, into the workplace, yeah. you know, getting that out on the table. And then the wild heart is like the creativity part, right? The excitement. It's almost like a cultural description. You think I about know. that. I know. I can't get this out of my mind. Yes. I, it's I a really love, good one. I got to check that one out because I do think there's been a shift there. And as we're trying to attract leaders, I know we've gotten really clear on who fits with us. We talk about coachability, but I like that piece because that little bit of wild at heart in our industry, it is a little crazy at times. Mm -hmm. and you have to be a little crazy to stay in this and actually yeah. go all in on it. Um, but that character piece, I almost think about the strong spine of like mm -hmm. your character. And then I do think leaders that have embraced the vulnerability, almost back yeah. to video, yes. that it's okay. <laughs> and I find myself at times when a team member comes in, right, and they have a question, it's like, it's okay, Brian, you don't have all the answers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. My, my job is to help guide them, empower them, and equip them to solve the problem with them, not always for them. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like that description. That got me, you got me thinking. <laughs> like, that's one we could take back. So we'll kind of close with this. So what's one big thing Emily wants to do this year, kind of as your career goals and things that you want to accomplish for yourself, whether inside a business, outside, yeah, so I put a I put a pretty high goal out there for myself this year um, to double my income. Love that. I know, to double my Big income. Goal. Yeah, and and I've come a long way, and and I think I do need to be um, sort of kind to myself if I don't hit that. Right. But you know, if you don't have a goal, and I don't have the quote right, but you know, you don't want to go so easy that you can attain it right now. It needs to be challenging. Yes. Um, and so when I put that goal out there for myself, as I think back to where I was, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, um, I'm getting there. I love it. Yeah. And that's a great one because it'll kind of pull you forward. And, and I'm with you on, you don't want to set a goal ever that's just like, oh man, this is like, this yeah, is super easy. Yeah, it's a cakewalk, yeah. And then in this industry, what's interesting is I think there's gonna be this dichotomy of recruiting could get a little bit, I don't want to say harder, but it, it might with people that are busy mm -hmm. while producers are having record years, mm -hmm. attracting talent, I think it's just going to look very different this year. And so how we approach that, like we were talking through strategically and tactically, like how do we continue? Because mm -hmm. we don't stop recruiting mm -hmm. because people got busy. No. And the refis decided to nope. come in and give us this huge blessing. But we got to keep moving forward, keep attracting talent. Absolutely. Which will be good. So thank you. This has been <laughs> incredible. I, I will tell you this is spending time with you and like having you with us here, housing wire and all that means the world. Because those of you that have recruiting partners, <laughs> you don't have a great recruiting partner like we do. Uh, <laughs> I'm plugging. But um, we're, we're so fortunate because I think that's how we continue to build relationships and make an impact. And so you've mm -hmm. really shared that today. So very Thank inspirational. You. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for <laughs> us. And guys, we'll have more tips, I'm sure. <laughs> but go back and listen to this. This was incredible. So as Emily breaks down, really for those of us that struggle with recruiting, she really gave you some ideas to make it your own and make it personal. So... This is Brian saying we are out from the Lone Depot studio here in Brentwood. Thank you so much. This was incredible. Thank you. <laughs> See you guys. Subscribe, rate, and review The Brian Covey Show today. Go to briancovey.com.